I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Paul Scherer, the director of Findora Research. Paul, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. No, it's great to be here with you, Ashton. Happy to be here. Likewise, I'm really excited for our discussion. If we could kick it off, first, I'd love to hear a little bit of your background on yourself in, in blockchain and finance and, and how that led to your involvement in Findora. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I'm coming to you from Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California, across from Stanford University and uh, adjacent to a lot of many startups that everybody is familiar with. Um, my background is about 30 years in capital markets here in Silicon Valley. So I've seen the benefits of raising capital. I've seen the extraordinary innovation that comes from deploying that capital. And I've also seen how it's a very, very narrow market. A very small number of participants have been able to benefit and overall uh, use these markets. Mm -hmm, definitely. And now with the blockchain industry exploding in Silicon Valley, it seems like there's becoming a lot more institutional interest and in startups popping up out of there uh, in the past few years. It's really exploding right now. Um, and that's where Findora has started. I'd love to hear an overview of you know, what is Findora and what is your vision and the mission of the platform? Oh, absolutely. Thanks so much. Yeah, the Findora focuses, we're building a global decentralized financial network. So nothing more broad than that. Similar to what you saw on the internet, a communication network that's accessible. It's a financial network that's accessible. Mm -hmm. We're focusing in three core areas, credential management, contract management, and currency management. Mm. So with those three building blocks, you can uh, globally build a trusted financial infrastructure, which is owned and democratically secured by decentralized network of worldwide organizations and economically incentivized parties. So transferring from core center of two or three major investment banks or commercial banks and allowing that same role and facilitation by uh, decentralized parties, anybody that's incentivized. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I was researching into the platform and you have quite a different amount of services and, and that you're, you're looking to solve. And there's a couple core problems that are in blockchain right now, at least the, with the main blockchains that we have with Bitcoin and Ethereum, then there's some problems there. Can you talk about mm -hmm. the core problems that Findora is focused on solving really inside the industry? Absolutely. It's relatively simple for us. There's two core problems that relate to each other. One is scalability and the other is privacy. Mm -hmm. And they tend to move in opposite directions. So if you want to have a scalable network that talks to tens of thousands, millions, maybe billions of users in a particular application or capability, like we see in streaming or other areas, which would be fantastic in the financial area. So any market is always improved by broadening the access to that market, broadening the information share, broadening the overall transaction capability. Every time you start to broaden that market, you have a resounding difficulty. You run up against mm -hmm. the privacy problem. Mm -hmm. Who are the rogue actors? Actors, whose credentials can be trusted, how should we deal with that? So it's a straightforward challenge. It's all in front of us. It's almost <laughs> central to the blockchain industry. Um, a few solutions have provided early capabilities. We want to make this available across uh, developers, institutions, and users alike. And that's the core problem we're solving, scalability and privacy. Mm -hmm, definitely. And what would you say makes Findora unique and different from other open financial networks that are growing right now? Well, first, as I just mentioned, it's ambition. Okay, a global distributed network is ambitious to say the least. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that's exciting, but it's a little bit more ambitious than a lot of point to point uh, products for payment or credential management or identity. And so it's, it's more ambitious. But at the same time, um, what we've done is to reach out to two core constituencies to guide our work. The academic community focused in the crypto market and the Stanford community and MIT communities have been very, very good. And you'll see more and more uh, outreach here. We want to open source most of these core capabilities to the community. Mm -hmm. So Already, we put in uh, ZK Snarks, Supersonics, 
other core capabilities are now available and for others. We want to obviously deploy them on our network, but others could use them successfully in other niche networks. And our network is always meant to be interoperable. So where we could be a backbone, uh, there are other subnets that could be developed using some of our technologies or even proprietary technologies that would then integrate. So first is that ambition. And then secondly is the simplicity and the elegance of the solution. So already you've seen our improvement in efficiency is a thousand fold from what we've seen before. Mm -hmm. That's game changing. When you can change that kind of uh, capability, then you can offer it at the scale we're talking about. The third area I would mention is, um, and I'm very excited about this, we're recruiting economists from around the world, Nobel laureates, others that are thinking deeply about economic solutions so that we will have technologies, not necessarily in search of just profits, but in search of implementing economic shifts that can ultimately thrive going forward. And that's very exciting. I don't know of other projects that have gone to that level of interest. Definitely, Paul, that's really exciting. And there's a couple of great things you touched on there. First of all, I heard blockchain interoperability. I think that's going to be a huge movement going forward as you know, Ethereum has the network effect and there's a couple other uh, blockchain platforms that are also focused on this. And I think that will allow Fendora to easily connect into the network and to grow faster. Um, you also talked about being very developer focused um, and having the tools needed for developers uh, to be able to build on top of the network and to help it grow faster. And that sort of leads me to my next question is, as you continue to grow Fendora, will you incentivize um, developer adoption, uh, providers and, and tools needed? Um, or, and or do you expect it most to be organic growth as you continue to grow? Oh, I wish we had a token for that kind of incentive model. Yes, we're looking at a public launch of a token to do just that kind of incentive to the community. Obviously, people need incentives to do work uh, that's meaningful. Otherwise, it's really not going to be useful. So absolutely, that's at the core of our uh, launch of our token coming up. Yes. Definitely. Oh, that's great. And in terms of developer ecosystem, how user-friendly is it for developers? You know, For example, with Ethereum, the developers had to learn a whole new programming language of Solidity just to try and build on Ethereum. And it was a big inhibitor for developers to jump onto the network. Have you lowered the barriers to sure. entry for others to help develop and grow Fendora? Um, we strive towards that. We're using Rust protocols, others that are simpler languages. Uh, we'll support the core languages that are there to the extent possible. But this is the challenge that we all face. Uh, DeFi is the future of the networks and simplifying those uh, tools and integrations is fundamental to that. Similarly though, if we can take and make the privacy component world-class, highly efficient, highly scalable, and you don't have to reinvent that, you can simply use that capability, that's massively supportive of a developer community because that will be the resistance point for uh, private banks or any, any type of account management. And if we can take that off your plate and you can focus on your core DeFi capability, mm -hmm. fantastic. Whether it's wealth management or, or any type of capital trading, any type of currency trading, any kind of payments, any type of supply chain management. I mean, what we want our developers doing is focusing on their core competence and not mm -hmm. this extended area, which is highly arcane, very, very challenging. And if we can make that simple and efficient, then we think we move the whole uh, blockchain forward. That's great, Paul. And I'm glad that you mentioned DeFi there because I do want to jump into some questions surrounding the DeFi industry. Um, for those that have been following the industry, they've seen the exponential growth of the industry so far this year. I think the value locked in DeFi was less than a billion at the beginning of 2020, and now we're over $10 billion with like exponential growth. Um, so first with a general question about DeFi, how is Fendora following and watching and looking to penetrate into the DeFi space? Again, we're staying in our core lane, if you will, scalability and privacy. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, and so uh, we will be developing the newest large-scale distributed system for advanced crypto, you know, using zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. So that's our core company adding to it. We're not going to replace all mm -hmm. the other work and activity that's going on in the DeFi space. We're going to enable 
these capabilities to take them to scale on a distributed basis globally and to secure them from a privacy basis from what they need. Definitely. And I was researching into uh, the DeFi applications that Fendora is working on. And what stuck out to me the most was privacy preserving decentralized finance applications. So if, if I understand correctly that the ZK snarks zero knowledge proofs and having that pr privacy protection with DeFi is really one of the main core goals that, that you're focusing towards. Precisely. Yes. Uh, and that's what the uh, next phase will need to be if we're going to see success at, at the DeFi uh, area. Um, people can do it in clusters of intranets or close associations, mm -hmm. but that's not really the promise of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. the blockchain is about a globally distributed trustless network, and that will require privacy for both the regulator side that can see things on, on a basis and uh, on the user side to make sure their credential, their currencies aren't being uh, viewed inappropriately. Definitely. And you touched on credentials twice now. I wanted to just ask you about that. It seems like there's a balance between having being privacy centric and having credentials that are on the blockchain to be able to verify the authenticity or legitimacy of your identity. Can you touch on how does your credential system work and, and how is it going to protect the privacy of users? Well, I don't want to give away all the secrets right now. Most fundamentally, though, the key is to keep the credential off the chain mm -hmm. so it never has exposure but you can do that you can create it validate it in, in a side net and then you can use that uh information in, in the way that's the fundamental preposition of a uh, zero knowledge proof is that you really don't have to put that information onto it you can prove it without mm -hmm. actually exposing the underlying data and that's a fundamental shift for the blockchain itself. So um, it's just natural that we would make that a, a core capability to uh, the privacy, because that's the starting point for everybody. Mm -hmm. If we could prove that at scale, essentially, we're talking about a global audience, aren't we? Mm -hmm. if, if everybody could retain their credential, uh, you're already approved. And now you're only authorized where uh, you have either you know, staked or you, you should go, but we can prove that out for you at scale, which mm -hmm. is pretty exciting. Again, that's what we want to do. So it makes a, a contract, a DeFi that you would develop available on a basis you could never even imagine yourself. You're never going to have the time to recruit all those individuals mm -hmm. and get them to trust you. That's what we've seen. Mm -hmm. There is no trusted entity good enough. So we have to solve this through a technology solution, and that's the Fendora opportunity. That's great, Paul. Thanks. And now you touched on, when I asked about incentivizing developers and adoption of the mm -hmm. platform, you touched on the Fendora token, the FRA. I want to move back to that and ask, can you overview the, the main functionality of the token within the ecosystem and, and how it creates a sustainable ecosystem? Yeah, obviously, what we've just said is there's tremendous value to be unlocked by a scalable decentralized network that could be retain the privacy of the user base. So we're going to unlock untold trillions really in value by supporting that capability. We need to incent, as you mentioned, the developers to implement, use, and interact with that network. Uh, and that's the foundation of the Pandora uh, token. Mm -hmm. Now, Looking forward to the future, can you talk about what are the major milestones and, and developments that your team is going to be working on as we move into 2021 and, and for the whole year of 2021? Yeah, good question. So uh, early in the year, we're launching our mainnet uh, with uh, some of the core uh, applications, very simple applications, really just to demonstrate um, the uh, primary capabilities that we've been discussing. Um, we've announced several partnerships to do that in collaboration, uh, Tencent Cloud and, and Bank of Asia. And we can talk about those more deeply later, but uh, that those will be rolled out in this coming year. We'll be recruiting, uh, as I mentioned, more research into the team. Very, very deep, very, very high uh, level capability. You'll, you'll recognize the names, if you will, in, in both the crypto space and the economic space, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting because over this then uh, 2021, we're going to look at some fundamental capabilities that we might be able to deliver more than point-to-point -point product. That's not 
our, our focus in this year, mm -hmm. but we really want developers doing their products. And then through the privacy and scalability we'll deliver, uh, we might be able to do some things that no one has really even conceived of yet. And that's why we want to have the very best minds considering those things. And then, uh, you know, by the end of the year, then you would see uh, a fully validated operating uh, network uh, that would be usable. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. And no, we're running short on time, but I do want to ask you a, a follow up to that, as you just mentioned, um, maybe a, a little bit about your prospective uh, entry into the Asian region, Southeast Asia, and, and how you're going to continue to grow uh, with those partnerships with Tencent, and, and as you mentioned. Thank you so much. Um, just first off, we're thinking globally, not regionally, mm -hmm. but you can't think about globe without thinking about Asia. So um, we have a core development team in Asia. Uh, we have founders from Asia. Um, we think uh, just holistically, though, I mean, we're, we're in the United States, we're in Asia, we're in Europe. And so it's really not developed for anything specific there mm -hmm. uh, necessarily. But uh, avid, obviously, both from the token participation, from the network participation, from the DeFi, from the communities we'll be working with, uh, Asia is a vital cornerstone of everything we're working on today and mm -hmm. going forward. Definitely. And to create that truly open, global, decentralized network, you really need the participation of, of all of these continents. Uh, so that's great that you have a uh, reach in those areas already. So that's great, Paul. Now we're, we're running out of time, but what is the best way for the viewers and developers and potential strategic partners to get involved with Fendora and to learn more and to get into the community? Yeah, we have a newsletter. Um, you can subscribe to our site and we do uh, periodic releases. Uh, we're doing quite extensive uh, AMAs. We like to use the community in place. This is much better than anything we would publish because it's it's your own community and everything you've developed. So hope, you know, invite us back. Um, we'll we'll uh, take those opportunities to keep you updated, but um, we're easy to see and find and, and follow. And there'll be more and more um, public available media events. Uh, we're probably doing a dozen AMAs, you know, over a short period of time. So. Um, feel free to uh, use our um, subscription and, and join our newsletter, but obviously just uh, stay in with whoever you trust and, and have them uh, have us on. <laughs> We'd rather be interviewed than uh, just produce media ourselves. Thanks. Definitely, Paul. Thanks for that. I will leave those links in the description box below for all the viewers. All the best with Fendora moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Let's do it. Thanks so much, Ashton. Terrific meeting you.